Hello, friends, and happy Thursday to you. If you're joining me on the replay, thank you so much for tuning in. We're live, and I'm excited to welcome you to today's live Level Up conversation. Welcome to Level Up with Winnie Sun. Market Update. Speed Round. Award-winning financial pro. And now, get ready. I present to you, Level Up with Winnie Sun. Hello, friends. I'm Winnie Sun, your host, Forbes contributor, CNBC council member, and award-winning financial pro. Here to keep you on top of all things relevant, trending business news. And can you believe we're already like past the middle of February? Time is flying by so quickly this year. But what makes this show really special is that you are part of our live discussion here. So we're going to be monitoring your comments regardless of what social media platform you're joining me on. As a reminder, we're tra- we're, we're sharing on like I think eight different social media platform. So if you put comments in, tell me how your week's going, if what you're looking forward to this long weekend, um, I will be able to see your comments. So thank you so much for those of you who are already here. And a big shout out, of course, to Joshua Cross X Fighter joining us from YouTube Live. Not a show without you. So thank you so much for tuning in. Always a treat to have you with us. Now let's talk about how the market closed. Dun, dun, dun. I, you know, it's like every day is a little bit different. So let's just get right into the Dow closed down 431 points. It's a triple down day, my friends. The NASDAQ also down 214. The S&P 500 also down 57 points. Stocks continue to fall today. And this, unfortunately, this week's been pretty choppy because you probably heard earlier this week about the higher than expected inflation report, right? Even though the Fed's been increasing interest rates, as it's not adjusting to a point where a lot of investors would feel more optimistic about investing this year. So you're seeing some sell-off today. Also, uh, a decline in jobless claims. You know, so that's happened as well. And you might think that's a good thing, right? Like if less people are filing for unemployment, isn't that a good thing? Well, for a super hot inflation economy that we're in, it's not necessarily a good thing. You actually want to see kind of like that Goldilocks effect. Not too great, not too bad, right in the middle. And we're not quite there yet. The economy is actually holding up uh, somewhat, you know. Uh, we're also looking, at, of course, what the Fed's going to increase interest rates to this month. There's been a lot of talks. I've been hearing a lot of talks about the Fed increasing interest rates by half a percent this month. And if that's the case, and if you're looking to buy a home, looking to refinance, it's certainly bad news for you. But Unfortunately, that's what we're seeing right now. Hopefully, things will get better by the end of the year. Fingers crossed. But right now, it's sort of a wait and see type of thing. And speaking of people having, like, not the best news. Those of you who watch this show regularly know we almost need to create an an Elon Musk moment or like a segment because he seems to be in the news constantly, especially in financial news. But this news, you may have heard there was some some talk about some issues with a union in New York that was today. But I'm not going to dwell on that because that's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a good thing. But this news, I think, is something that we definitely need to talk about because it's impacting so many people. So today, Tesla has, is doing a voluntary recall of, get this, 362,000 plus vehicles that were equipped with this thing called full service uh, driving beta, or FSD for short beta, which is driver assistance software here in the United States. Well, it's getting the, the cars are getting recalled by the hundreds of thousands because there are definitely some issues. Although you know, new users of Tesla's were very excited about this. I loved it. I was hoping that at some point I wouldn't have to drive so much. I could just be in the car and the car would take me to where I needed to be. Well, seems like that's not going to happen just yet. Looks like we're going to have to wait just a little bit longer. Yes, Joshua, that is the news. And Jeff, thanks so much, Joshua, for asking. How am I doing today? I'm doing great. It's been a really busy week and always really grateful to be here with all of you. Well, this Tesla news is talking about that this system, unfortunately, could cause crashes by allowing those vehicles to act in an unsafe way around intersections. Yes, and the car might actually have trouble responding appropriately 
to changes in posted speed limits, which is also not a good thing. To give you an idea of like, if you if you drive a Tesla, like I drive a Tesla, and you might wonder, well, is my car part of this recall? It seems like most people are involved with this recall. So it probably makes sense to just check to see, check your Tesla app and see if you're part of this recall. Defected vehicles are going to include 2000 to 2020, 2016 to 2023 model S's and model X's, model S and X's, 2017 to 2023 model 3's, 2020 and 23 model Y's, that are equipped or pending installation of this FSC beta. Um, yeah, so if you are affected by this, I'm thinking many of you are if you drive a Tesla, here's what you need to know. They're actually planning to deliver the over-the-air software update to your car to address this issue. So hopefully that means that that will solve it so you don't have to take your car in to get you know fixed and whatnot. This software, I'm guessing this software patch is probably going to make it so you just can't use that technology. I'm guessing. I don't know. But um, so supposedly this sort is that premium FSD software. And some people actually had to pay like $15,000 up front to have this system or like $200, approximately $200 a month to be able to have this um, FSD beta access. So if you didn't pay that much, you might be feeling like, you lucked out because those who have it, it looks like it's not even working that well and actually could harm you. So yeah, this is what we're reading. This is what we're reading. So NHTSA and Tesla Communications described the system as a SAE level two driver support feature, um, which, which allows it to help with, you know, steering, braking acceleration, things like that. But right now the conclusion is they are taking steps to fix it, to address these safety issues. Hopefully by doing this over the air, those drivers, those vehicles that are affected, that better days are ahead, right? So that's what we know so far. I'm curious if you drive a Tesla, maybe your neighbor drives a Tesla, maybe someone else, you know, in your family drives them. Um, what do you think? How do they feel about the news that's been coming out? How do they feel the news about Tesla? How do they feel the news about Elon Musk and Twitter? I don't know. Like the people I've been talking to, I think overall just feel a little numb. Like they just want to get back to better days ahead. So, you know, that's what I've been hearing. But on that note, some other news, and this is coming out of YouTube and slash Google. Uh, so YouTube CEO, uh, Susan Wojcicki, I hope I'm saying that way. Well, Kiski uh, announced today that she will be stepping down from her role at the company as CEO. This is a big deal. Susan's been leading YouTube for quite some time. In fact, almost a decade. So she wrote that uh, her plans, she said that her plans are to, um, you know, start a new chapter in her life. She wants to focus on health and family and other things that inspire her, like personal projects and things that she's excited about. And she's been at the company, I guess, Google uh, Inform for about 25 years. So that's a really long time. And she definitely played a key role in helping to build the YouTube platform. In fact, for those of you who know, she's been the CEO of YouTube for about a decade. And during that time, she launched a whole bunch of new features, which many of you probably enjoy, including live streaming, which we're doing today, right on YouTube, uh, YouTube TV. And she also expanded YouTube's footprint to the Middle East and to India and many other new markets. So she's done quite a bit. She's also been a huge advocate of free speech, Maybe not in the way that Elon has been an advocate of free speech, but Susan's also been an advocate of free speech, open access to information, and um, even to a point where it's been controversial. So uh, she was involved with Google from really the earliest of days. In fact, um, when they first started uh, Google, the two founders actually worked out of her garage here in California, I think in Northern California, in fact. 
And she was then Google's 16th employee. So she's been there a really long time. So what's going to happen to uh, YouTube at this point? I guess a gentleman by the name of Neil Mohan, who is uh, YouTube's current chief product officer, will take over as YouTube's new CEO. And so a lot to be looking forward to. Susan also hinted that there's a lot of things that are coming ahead for YouTube. And this is probably something you want to pay attention to. So they've included, they're talking about AI, of course. They're talking about shorts, which many of you are enjoying. I know Curtis, our creative director on our team, loves the YouTube shorts, streaming, subscriptions, just like there's a lot of new things coming to YouTube. So they're saying not to worry, better days ahead also for YouTube. We'll take it. It sounds very, very much exciting. And Susan is going to continue to stay on with the Google family to provide advice to YouTube and work with you, some of the YouTube teams and, of course, provide advice to uh, Google's current CEO as well. So that should be good. Um, so that's what she's doing. We want to say a big congratulations to Susan. If you're watching, congratulations. Uh, great news, and hopefully uh, you're able to spend more time with and doing the things that you love most importantly. All right. Lastly, I want to talk about a big article that came out, big story coming out uh, this week as well, talking about, get this, consumer debt. That's right, credit card debt. Now, I'm not going to ask you if you have credit card debt. I do know from my experience with working with many, many households and businesses and individuals across the globe, that credit card debt is a huge thing. And even, and it doesn't even matter. People always think, well, if you make more money, you have high income, you don't have credit card debt. Let me tell you, that couldn't be farther from the truth. In fact, it, it really is really sort of, there's no rhyme or reason. Uh, doesn't really matter how much you earn or how little you earn or how, how high of an amount you do. People seem to have credit card debt across the board. Now, not everybody has it. And hopefully those of you are watching, you don't have it. But if you do, you're not alone. In fact, credit card balances here in the United States have reached over $16.9 trillion, trillion with a T as in Tom. Americans continue to add to their debt at, at the end of last year, and these balances have grown at record rates. This is according to a new study and data coming from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. In fact, the total U.S. household debt hit almost 17 trillion, like we talked about, in, in the fourth quarter, an increase of $394 billion um, in just that during that short three-month time frame. This is according to the Fed's report. So what does that mean? That means people continue to spend at record levels, even though inflation continues to be at sky high levels. You've heard that the price of eggs up over 70%, the price of you know used cars, real estate, everything uh, is, for those of you who earn a paycheck, you probably saw a boost in your paycheck, but you're probably thinking, I mean, it's great, I got a boost, but it still hasn't changed my standard of living. And that's because a lot of goods and services have also creeped up and increased in price as well. So consumers are spending more now than ever, even though price is going higher, and some of that spend is landing on credit cards. So thought I would share that with you. That was a big news for this week. And that's news that we're going to really want to pay attention to because if we see that number continue to get bigger, that will have a negative impact at some point of consumers and the abilities that they have to spend because credit card debt accrues at sky high interest rate levels. So that can then in the in the long term, that could equate to people not be able to pay their bills, right? Not be able to pay credit card, period. Not be able to pay their rent or their mortgage. Um, and a lot of things which could impact the financial markets, the real estate market, and so many other things. So something we'll continue to keep a very close eye on. And finally, before we close off for this week on Level Up Live, this is a friendly reminder that is now 61 days left till the tax deadline this year for 2022 tax filing deadline, which is Tuesday, uh, April 18th this year. And of course, I want to share with you one bit of good news. And this is, don't forget this potential tax deduction. If you are, uh, if you are filing your taxes or having someone file taxes and you are making sure that you do itemized deductions, don't forget that there is a 
one deduction a lot of people forget, and that is charitable contributions. Now, you might think uh, charitable contributions means when you write a check or you make a cash donation or you put something on your credit card. And yes, that absolutely is a charitable donation. And that contribution should be considered a tax deduction. So that's something you'll want to talk to your tax advisor with. If you're filing your own taxes, um, be on the lookout for that if you are doing itemized deductions. The other thing, though, to remember, though, it's not just out-of-pocket costs in terms of writing a check. Don't forget the out-of-pocket costs incurred while you're doing good deeds. This can also be potentially written off. You'll have to check with your tax advisor, but some of these could include, let's say you're making a meal, right? For a qualified nonprofit. Well, the ingredients that you use to make that meal could be deductible. Let's, let's say you're donating to a soup kitchen or something. Also, let's say, you know, you're, you are, you know, doing a school fundraiser and you had to pay for stamps, for example. Well, those are potentially tax deductible as well. And let's say you had to drive your car for a charity. Maybe you had to drop something off, you know, take something somewhere. That could potentially be deductible too in the amount of 14 cents per mile for last year when you file your taxes. So hopefully that's helpful. If you follow under that criteria, definitely check with your tax advisor. That's always the best place to go. And of course, with that, my friends, I hope that you have a beautiful weekend. And if for those of you who uh, get an extra day or two here for President's Weekend, enjoy your long weekend. Take a moment, if you can, to like and subscribe, my friends. And find, you can, of course, find full episodes of Level Up with Winnie Sun on NASDAQ, Samsung, Amazon Fire, Roku, and many other places. And don't forget to check out Yes Factor with Winnie Sun on Apple Podcasts. That's with the LinkedIn Podcast Network. Thank you, my friends, and I can't wait to see you again next week. Be well and take care.